Thank you for listening and welcome to the Life Podcast, a proud member of the Eventide Entertainment Podcast Network. I'm your host, Don Smith. Our good friend Charlie Hester is back in to guest co-host already. We get to spend some quality time with the seriously funny Jesse Nutt, and Mark Shalafu calls in to talk about his upcoming show at Wiley's Comedy Club. If you enjoy the show, like and follow The Life 1069 on Facebook and Don Smith Comedy on Twitter, or tune in live on Tuesdays from 7 to 9 p.m. on WWSU 106.9 FM, or you can stream the show live at WWSU1069.org. Well, brutal presence overwhelms me. A brutal presence. All right, welcome to the Life Radio Show. If you're sticking around from Patrick's show, uh, we'll we'll try to wake you back up. <laughs> uh, see, he heard that too. He's still he's still. I forgot. I thought you were gone already, Patrick. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, the, I pull up a chair. Why not? <laughs> Well, you don't, you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to pull up a chair, but you, you certainly may uh, so since, so since so you're I being forced stand. to stick around. Yeah. I'm joking. But that, yeah, triple P is, is, uh, is sticking around with us for a little bit. Cause, uh, uh cause I forced him to, and you, uh, got, you got three P's so far right now. Yeah. Okay. It, we that, that's, we're, we're, we're trying to decide why he calls himself triple P and that's how many times <laughs> during the show he has to go. And that, well, Jesse hey. Nutt is already here. Uh, yeah. Uh, Charlie Hester is running very late. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> I was running across the parking lot. This is why we do cardio and comedy, kids. At least you weren't here for the fire alarm at five o'clock. What? Yeah, I was. He, in the t- middle. he set the building on fire. I, I had well, apparently my topic was very fired up. So yes, yes, I had just started talking about Tumblr's porn ban, and the fire alarms go off, and I had to cut the show for thirty minutes until they gave what? the all clear. See. You shouldn't have even brought it up. <laughs> Man. Oh. oh, that's all right. Charlie Hester has, Hi, has made everybody. it into the studio back all the way from uh, from Illinois. Yes. For yes. this show. You, it was a drive. It um, was. It was. There we go. <laughs> so, okay. We, we, we have a game tonight. <laughs> we, <laughs> we have a game tonight. Uh, Charlie is not allowed to say yeah, right, or awe. Okay. So yeah. yeah. Oh, those yep. are <laughs> dang. <laughs> dang it. Hold on. Start starting starting <laughs> start in a few minutes now. once we get the crowd right now. <laughs> no, I, last time I did the show, I was listening and uh to you afterwards and I you I noticed that you realized said, those you, you add those words as filler and yeah. drive you crazy. Oh. Dang it. Okay. So then, yeah. then what I did was I sat down with a notebook and I started marking, like with tally marks, how many times I repeated those words. It was not pretty. Now, clearly, the words that I can't say are yeah, right, and ah. So I'm, I'm a very supportive, empathetic listener and conversationalist. So I have that Absolutely. going for me. But yes, so I am... I need to be avoiding those words this evening. See, I, I notice when I listen to myself on the, uh, I, I say "there you go" a lot. That's that's like my was, that's like my go to. That's is, your there Donism. You there you go. Yeah. Yeah. When I started in <laughs> yeah. comedy, um, I had a. Uh, you didn't give me your bell, so I can ding. <laughs> ding. There, yeah, I, I brought a bell of shame, <laughs> so that every ding. time I say the words, the bell of shame rings, and I am. This is very, oh, this is very Stanford you. prison-y. I need some electrodes. Yeah. Here's like you say, ding, ow! You'll stop. I guarantee right. you'll stop. Yeah. I guarantee you, you'll, you'll stop. No, when I when I started in comedy... See, that's the bad thing. If she's going to say it, then she's going to cuss after I ring the bell, <laughs> well, and that's even worse. Right. There's a high probability, yes. But I start, and my go-to was, you know. Ooh, and I would say uh-huh. it, it out of nerves or whatever... And I didn't even realize I was doing it, and it was a, a club owner at the time, Lisa Grigsby, much love. Lisa pulled me aside. And, I mean, it was like a five-minute set or something. And it was really a short set. <laughs> she said, you know how many times she said, you know? No. <laughs> 27 times. Wow. Like, wow. No, I didn't. She said, that's, no, we taped it. Here, listen. That's Went a lot. That's a lot. Five minutes. I'm like... <laughs> You count that up. I could have put a whole nother joke 
in if I took all the you knows out. Absolutely. And that's when I started recording every set all the time. And that's when you pick up those little, the little things that you'll do to kill time, try to get your transitions right. Exactly. And so that's, though I know exactly what you mean because, ooh, taking out you know, and I had a couple others that I would just blurt out when my brain would freeze and I couldn't think of anything else to say. I'm just going to say, well, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, w- w- when you first start out, there, there's kind of the uh, the fear of silence mm-hmm. on stage because I still – I, it still hits me every now and then. I I have to just kind of bring myself down, relax. Say, okay, I, I'm so used we're to good. audience we're good silence. I quiet. embrace it now. I just yeah. they're, they're quiet anyway. So <laughs> yeah, but- <laughs> why disturb them? Why wake them with a joke? I, Sunday night show was, was, was pretty good. That was a hot show, there. top yeah. to bottom. That was yeah. That was a real hot show. And you you had you had some new stuff that really yeah cracked um, me up. I well let's see. I could tell part of one <laughs> on the air. I can't tell. Uh, yeah, you know, those are, well, okay. Like the, the, the one I did about, um, the panhandler asked me, cause he charged, charged his phone. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I've been working on that joke for a while. And it, it, the whole premise of the joke was that, you know, Dayton's a city of invention. Cause we're really inventive people. Um, this whole area, we, we just, we come up with quirky ways to get things done mm-hmm. and we've always got new ways of doing it. And I was telling this story about how, you know, a lot of people, they avoid panhandlers, especially if they're coming off the highway, off 35, you know, they're at the bottom of the exit ramp. You know, they'll roll up their window, put down the sun visor, avert their gaze. I'm like, no, uh-uh, there but for the grace of God. It could be me, all right? So I always, you know, at least make eye contact. How you doing, blah, blah, blah. And half the time, I'm broker than they are, so it's not like I got <laughs> anything to give them. But the one guy, and... <laughs> And it literally, I'm coming down the ramp. I see him. The light changes to red. I stop. He goes, hey, man, let me get a charge. I'm like, what? Let me get a charge. Let me plug my phone in and charge. <laughs> this light lasts 1 minute 47 seconds. That's 1% <laughs> of charge on my phone. Let me plug in. That's a solid plan, though. I let him plug in. Absolutely. All right. That, that's the best thing I'd heard. The light turned green. I wave people around. I'm like, look, he's got to update his Facebook. Y'all need to just go. Wow. That's, yeah. like, that's like the duct tape of homelessness. I mean, it's sort of the the cure all. Yeah. And it was just so cool. But I and see the thing about that joke and brand new joke. I know I'm going to catch grief because somebody is going to think I'm making fun of people that panhandle and I'm not. Now, I am making fun of people that don't charge their phone. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm ridiculing you. Because you are the people that make me mad in the airport. Yeah, do that before you leave the house. Okay, please. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you get to the airport and your phone is at 1%? <laughs> you did not charge Well, how, how do you get to your corner by the interstate and have it only as one, at 1%? At 1%. Yeah. Okay. I have a battery case that ha- it holds an extra charge. And so I can charge my phone three times with my case as long as I plug it in at night. So but do you yeah. remember to plug it in oh, at night? Shoot, ring the bell, Don. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> but this is good. I'm catching myself. Yeah, this is yeah. <laughs> you're you're hyper aware of it. I now. am it's, hyper yeah. aware. Because I missed that one. I didn't even ring the bell. It's so. because I'm so engaging. Yeah. And that sharp. that is true. That is true. I'm blinding you with I'm my just, charm. I'm just glad I get to ring your bell tonight. <laughs> That's <laughs> It's the bell of shame. Are you really yeah. proud of that? Yeah, yeah. I... It's not the bell of shame. It's, <laughs> it's the bell of new beginnings. The, the bell, bell of change. Yes, the bell look, of enlightenment. Look at the smile on this bell. That is not a bell of shame. <laughs> I, I have the most ridiculous musical instruments. I have a bell like okay, that. Okay, first of all, yes. if, if all of what you guys just said could be scripted into a porn movie... <laughs> That would win. That would at least be nominated for best screenplay because there there was absolutely nothing sexual about anything you said. But it, but was it just, works. But it, it, oh, it, it totally works. works. Yeah, yeah, totally works. Don, new business venture. I've done the research. It totally works. It's worth a try. It's worth a try. I I've mean, done, I've done nothing to lose. Okay, look between Bell of Shame and I've got strange musical instruments. It was in there. It was totally in there. Loving it. You want to check out my slide whistle, Don? <laughs> See? <laughs> and now that i've driven the show into the gutter i'm no, sorry that's, below the gutter it usually gets there pretty quick mm-hmm. anyway, i was gonna say so, we yeah. get it there pretty yeah, quickly yeah usually that's what she said 
<laughs> See? See? That, yeah, there we See? are. We're right charming. right back. We're right right so there. So charming. I'm glad we're recording all this. That way we'll be able to transcript it later oh. and get this get this movie idea off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> we need to come up with a clever title. We can do that. I bet by the end of this show we'll have several okay, clever clearly titles. Okay, neither one of you has ever seen porn. There is no such thing <laughs> yeah, as a clever, clever. It just, title. <laughs> just blank. Okay. I take pride in my no, work. No, I think they do word generators to come up with the titles. These are the <laughs> dumbest titles on earth. Right, but we need whatever it is. We need to add in step sibling so that it gets lots of hits. That seems to be the is is that what that's, is, that's what trending in porn now? <laughs> well, you know, nothing's trending in porn right now except all the perverts griping because they can't have Tumblr anymore. Yeah, oh, that's, that's yeah, a big to do. That is that is quite the kerfuffle uh, on the interweb. <laughs> kerfuffle. That's an amazing name for an imaginary porn, isn't it? See. Quite well, the kerfuffle. But no, I, I'm sure if you look that up right now in Urban Dictionary, it means something so vile and, and terrible, and, and it shouldn't. But How would you spell kerfuffle? K-E-R. Oh, he, hold on. You, yeah. Boy, you've got it. Uh, I think it's F-U. Be careful. We're on the radio. I know. I know it's <laughs> kerfuff, and it's F-U-F-F, and I don't know if it's L-E or E-L. Oh, hold on. Google. Google it out kerfuffle for, me. for you. <laughs> There's a lot of people in kerfuffles right now. I put kerf in and there we went. A commotion of fuss, especially one caused by conflicting views. And that's where Tumblr, and, and right now, that's why that's the best word for Tumblr. Kerfuffle. Because at the same time you ban, um, quote unquote, porn, but you're also banning erotica, blah, blah, blah. But if you're advocating any kind of uh, nationalist views, any kind of racial supremacy supremacy whether it's black or white or whatever you can find a home on tumblr right as long <laughs> I <caught you> on <laughs> that one. he was waiting though. he was he was literally yeah, looking there one. just like you, were, you were projecting i knew that one was coming up that was like a that was like an episode of planet earth okay it was, <laughs> the praying mantis is <laughs> waiting <laughs> i can be on a game show all right that was that quick <laughs> But yeah, you can you can do all this other um, reactionary stuff that is covered by the First Amendment, except this interpretation of the First Amendment. That's why I think Tumblr is conflicted. Okay, yeah, community standards—that's a nice buzzword, and it's a coverall, and everybody's using it now. But ultimately, it's still the First Amendment. It's still protected. Okay, if you can't be here, then where are you going to be? Mm-hmm. Because again, it is still protected speech. So that's my issue with Tumblr, not the idea that, okay, you want to put this behind some walls or whatever. The idea that you're just going to eliminate it as if it doesn't exist. We we have a call coming in already. Uh-oh. Hello. So let's let's see sorry. who we got. It, it uh, may be Mark Shalafo. I didn't even right know now. that we did it call It may be Don? Mark Shalafo, so we'll, we'll see who we got uh-huh. here. This is the life. You're on the air. Hi, this is Mark Shalafo. Well, let me, let me turn you up some so we can hear you in the studio. Is this Mark? Yep. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? All right. We we were just discussing kerfuffles. Oh, kerfuffles. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any input on kerfuffles? Uh, you know, I'm all for it. I'm all right. All, all right. Well, yeah. I we we are a pro kerfuffle studio. <laughs> <laughs> we encourage confusion. Uh, county fairs make the best kerfuffles. Yeah. <laughs> but they're well, deep fried. They're deep fried. Afraid kerfuffle. of the chaos. Yeah, but I like. You got to embrace it. I like firehouse kerfuffles myself, but that's, uh, Mark, you're you're on the air with uh, uh, Charlie Hester's uh, guest co-host tonight, and uh, we're in with uh, Jesse Nutt as well. So, well, the, the dream team, absolutely. It's it's that's why the kerfuffle. So. Yes, <laughs> yes, we are all suffering from narcolepsy, so we are the dream team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you calling in. You're going to be playing Wiley's in the beginning of January. I am. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. It's my New Year's resolution to headline at Wiley's. I'll be getting it out of the way early. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and you're done. After that, it's the rest of the year you're off. You're off yep. the hook. That's yeah. perfect. That's brilliant. You accomplish your resolution early, and then you take the rest of 2019 off. And, wow. You know, get back at it for 2020. Yeah. Cool. That's, that's a great system. Yeah, that's that's like if you if you – made a new year's resolution to, to lose 20 pounds and then cut off your leg yeah. on january 2nd you're done yeah, oh, yeah i don't know that i would 
really uh, equate to the experience of cutting off your leg to performing at Wiley's. I don't know if I was going there. <laughs> I okay, think it's well, much more enjoyable than cutting off your leg. Well, but, it depends you know, on well, who's it, opening for you. That's true. Um, that's true. <laughs> Do you know who's opening for you yet? Yeah, I'm uh, bringing a very funny comedian from Cincinnati, Andrew Rudick, who uh, oh, okay. is on yeah, the yeah, Sirius yeah. XM. Same, yeah. And uh, Kelly Haran is hosting. She's a, a funny up-and-comer. So oh, yeah. I've seen both of their sets, and only uh, on the very rare occasion have I wanted to cut off my leg while watching them. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Sounds Only like it's going to be a great see? show with with all everybody's body parts intact. Yeah, that's <laughs> what we want. Uh, my goal is, you know, I hope everyone has, uh, you know, a few laughs. But at the very least, I want them to leave with the body parts they came with. If I can do that, <laughs> I've delivered a safe, successful show. See, that's so, a comedy slogan, right? So, now. Awesome, Mark, awesome, should I yeah. not wish you good luck by saying break a leg then? Well, yeah, you can break you don't it. Just break don't, it too hard. don't break okay. it off. I, I yeah, just once the needed... bone punctures the skin, and then you know, <laughs> break yeah, it you don't want to risk it. Okay, I needed the clarification because I didn't want a kerfuffle to happen. Right. So, <laughs> well, I, like I thought kerfuffle. we were. I thought we were pro kerfuffle. We are definitely pro. Yeah. Man. yeah, I guess there are some limitations to the kerfuffles I'm going to support. I don't want to lose any limbs. <laughs> okay, okay. So no, no loss of limb and during the kerfuffle. That that makes perfect sense. Yeah. As long as there's no lasting impact to my uh, ability to live life, I'm all for kerfuffle. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's good to have you in. I, I always ask my guests, uh, which I haven't gotten to Jesse yet, to, right. to ask you how long you've uh, been doing comedy. But we'll get Mark since he's on the phone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how how long you've been performing, and and what got you started initially? Uh, well, it was radio that got me started. Oh, I'm I've sorry. Been performing for uh, nine years. I started in radio down in uh, WLW in Cincinnati. The big one. And, uh, yeah, I was on a, I started in on the overnight trucking show, which was a Bozo. Uh, I was unaware that people called with their, uh, you know, trucker handles, so I thought I was getting pranked. <laughs> um, I was working as a call screener, and the first guy was like, hey, this is Doc Holliday. If Darth Vader calls, can you give him my cell phone number? I was like, nope, this is not <laughs> happening. <laughs> And I found out they were, you know, characters on the show later. I transitioned over to sports after a few months and worked there for about 18 months running a new sports show. And one of our big guests was a comedian, Josh Sneed. Yeah. Um, okay. I know Josh. And it was Josh that got me into the comedy game, and uh, I have not looked back since. All right. Well, that's good. That's good. No need to look back now. Yeah. You got all, I mean, your, got all your limbs. You're good. <laughs> Right. I've had, don't get me wrong, I've had my fair share of kerfuffles over those nine years. <laughs> um, but it, it's just best to look forward to, to the next kerfuffle rather than living in, in the past. So, yeah, it's been a good good nine years. I've done a lot of fun things, gone to a lot of fun places, and, uh, you know, obviously wouldn't trade it for anything. Mark, one of the things I really appreciate about you is you find a way to incorporate kindness with comedy. And I, I, the the cookie drive that you did last year was just amazing, and so you're you're making such a positive mark in the business of comedy. And I just want to tell you, I appreciate that. Thank you. That's so nice of you to say. I I know that resonated with some people. I I just thought it'd be a fun way to respond to a wrong number text, and I was uh, very excited <laughs> with how it took off. It was, <laughs> You know, anytime you can uh, troll somebody with love, I think that's a good thing to do. <laughs> Trolling with love. And, um, like it's another you know. great porn name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, like, I was excited. With how I, I mean, I still get text messages from them sometimes. I don't think they've realized that the whole number thing is not. Even after all that, they still don't realize it. But, um, you know, anytime you can have some fun and do something good at the same time, uh, you got to support that. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm I'm not familiar with the uh, the cookie drive and what what happened. I'll give with you that. Uh, the short version is I just so this is probably a year and a half ago now. I got uh, added accidentally added to this family's group text thread, and uh, I, I just got a picture of an old lady, and it had a little kid with them, and it said having funny Grammy. So I thought if I responded with anything that they would realize I wasn't in their family, they would take me out of this group text chat. <laughs> so I said, it looks like he's that. having fun, you know, and they, uh, they kept responding. I was like, okay, they're not getting this. And then I didn't hear anything for like a solid eh, three, four weeks. And I got a picture of a soldier, five soldiers in front of a helicopter. So I thought, okay, I'll try this again. 
And um, the text for that picture just said Christian and his unit shipping out for six months. Hmm. So again, I was like, hey, if I just comment here, they'll realize I'm not in the film. So I said, which one is Christian? Meaning like, all right, they should clearly realize he was the only black guy in the photo, which I should have known <laughs> if I'm in the family, right? Um, instead, they were just like, he's the one on the far right. And I was like, okay, well, they're never going to get it. So I said, he's a true patriot. And everybody responded with flag emojis and stuff like that. Uh, so then I didn't hear anything for about three or four more weeks. And then I just got a text in the thread that just said, here's Christian's address. If you want to send him a care package while he's deployed. And I thought, well, that is definitely going to happen. Because <laughs> um, at that point, I, for, you know, this has been going on for a while. I didn't know who they thought that I was. Maybe it was a brother or an uncle or a friend. I didn't want that guy to look like a jerk. Right. So I got to get a care package. I didn't know what to put in a care package. So I uh, asked Facebook, and some people said I should send cookies. Some people said I should send, you know, other things. And a couple of people said they wanted to chip in, too. So I thought, wouldn't it be hilarious to start a GoFundMe and send this guy 3,000 cookies? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was, it was very funny. It uh, A few celebrities tweeted about it. So we tripled the amount of money we wanted to raise and sent wow. 9,000 cookies. I don't even I didn't even know if he liked cookies at that point. <laughs> you know? <laughs> the guy could have had a nut allergy for all I knew. But, um, yeah, it went well. He sent me a note that his unit loved the cookies, and his mom sent me a nice handwritten note. But I still kept getting the text messages somehow. So they still <laughs> don't. They oh, you still family don't know. Yeah, yeah you're family now. <laughs> You said 9,000 cookies, buddy. You're yeah, in. You're, a dog. you're in the will. Yeah, I, I bought my way in. <laughs> With Oreos. I love it. Uh, that that That's funny, but it, that's great. That that is, that is a nice thing. Yeah, it really resonated with people online. I just thought it would be something fun to do, a funny way to respond to it, and I enjoyed it. But um, So we're the real heroes of that story are the strangers that donated money and chipped into it because – you know, my part was uh, more in the orchestrating it. And right, you were just you were just having fun, fun and being silly, and <laughs> yeah, and the fact that people, and even in the GoFundMe, I said, you know, there's a million worthy causes that you could give money to. This is not one of them. You know, there are people <laughs> well, that yeah. are losing their houses, and you know, have you know, sick kids or stuff like that. This was just something fun to do for a stranger. So, well, it's soldiers um, that needed cookies. Too, everybody so, loves yeah. cookies. Everybody yeah, loves cookies. Yeah. Absolutely. That's true. Uh, it just falls pretty low on the list of things that uh, strangers probably need. It's just a bunch of random cookies. <laughs> Unless you don't have any cookies. That, yeah, That's there awesome. you go. Because if you don't have cookies, you're you're needing them. All right. I mean, these days, just if any positive story that comes from the Internet just has to be seen as a win for society with how much negativity the there truth. is online. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I, I'd imagine some of your suggestions from Facebook are probably things you couldn't repeat on the air, too. Yeah, it just yeah, just judging from Facebook in general. Yeah, you can throw it out to the mob, and uh, you know you just gotta appeal to their better sensibilities and not encourage the people at the bottom of the barrel. All right, <laughs> they got there for a reason. You let them stay down there. Yeah, there you go. See, I told you I say there you go a lot. Oh, <laughs> I, need, I need a second See, bell. Yeah, we need a second bell for my bell of shame. We're, we're trying. We're trying to correct some of our uh, our uh, weird idiosyncrasies on the air. Uh, Charlie's not allowed to say "yeah, right" or "all," or I get to ding the bell of shame. <laughs> You're going to try and uh, ruin his catchphrase. You know, like it's a big money maker. Yeah. That his get her that, done. That's what. Yep. Yeah. That's your get her done. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Somebody like tried to shut down the get her done pretty early on. We wouldn't even know who Larry the Cable Guy is. Wouldn't that be nice? No. Oh, oh. <laughs> and that's why I keep that coming back to the show. <laughs> well, I, do you have any social media you want to shout out before we got to take a break here shortly? And I don't yeah. want to keep you on for forever. Uh, people can find me on uh, you know Facebook and Twitter. It's at Mark Shalafu. It's spelled exactly like it sounds. Very easy. Um, and I will be at Wiley's on January fourth and fifth. All right. Well, we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you guys for having me, and good luck with your kerfuffles. Thank you. Good luck with your own kerfuffers. K- kerfuffles. <laughs> or kerfluffers. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, That's a good porno them. name, too. Kerfluffer. Go. Kerfluffer. <laughs> <That's> kerfluffer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks for calling. See you, Mark. <laughs> that sounds uh, like more like a job description. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, on, the on the, yeah, it's a kerfluffer. The backup fluffer. <laughs> backup fluffer. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to go ahead and hit the comedy rundown. We're going to take a little break. I have some Mike O'Connell uh, queued up. Have you heard Mike O'Connell before? I he, have not. He uh, he has he has some really fun songs that I play every now and then. I love that you uh, always make sure he, that there's good funny songs <laughs> when I'm yeah. In that, the this studio. this is one that's it's called Baboon Heart. It's it's a I very, love it's, it's a love song. It's a love song. But here, here's this week's comedy rundown brought to you by the legendary Wiley's Comedy Club at 101 Pine Street in Dayton's historic Oregon district. Call 224-Joke. I got, hold on. <laughs> okay, I'm better now. Uh, call 224-Joke or go to Wiley'sComedy.com for all the best in Dayton comedy. Uh, Tuesday, December 18th, tonight, open mic at Peaches Grill at 104 Xenia Avenue in Yellow Springs. That show starts at 8 p.m. Uh, Wednesday, December 19th, open mic at the South Park Tavern at 1301 Wayne Avenue. That show starts at 9. Uh, Thursday, December 20th, there's two open mics. There's the, uh, the Spirited Goat at 118 Dayton Street in Yellow Springs. That show starts at 7 p.m. There's also an open mic at the Barrel House at 417 East 3rd Street from 830 to 11. Friday and Saturday, December 21st and 22nd, Ryan Singer is going to be at Wiley's Comedy Club at 101 Pine Street in the Oregon District with uh, Mike Helensky featuring and Joe Young is going to be hosting. And also on Friday and Saturday, DeRay Davis is going to be at uh, Dayton Funny Bone at 88 Plum Street at the Green. And Sunday, December 23rd, there's an open mic at Mila's Suburban Cafe at 606 Taywood Road in Englewood. Sign-ups are 3 p.m. if you call 937-832-2200. That show starts at 7 p.m. And also on Sunday, uh, Joe Deuce is at the Dayton Funny Bone. That is it. As always, check out Wiley'sComedy.com and DaytonFunnyBone.com for details and tickets to upcoming shows. And don't forget to show some love on Monday nights to the open mic at hannah's at 121 north ludlow street in dayton although i don't know if they're having one this week considering uh, that would be uh probably. christmas eve yeah it's christmas eve. i doubt they'll have it this week but no. probably not but yeah. uh I, I need to get it i need to get out more it's a great That's little open mic man do. it's a nice spot yeah all right we're gonna play a little uh, uh mike o'connell and some baboon heart remember that this is a very uh, very uh heartfelt love song all right When I was five, they gave me a baboon heart. When I was 23, you tore it apart. It didn't hurt me, it didn't mean a thing. But somewhere there's a baboon, and he's crying. He's crying, how's that make you feel? Well, you can tell me I'm fat, I'm dumb, I'm bad and bad. But it won't hurt me, it'll hurt the baboon instead. And don't come crying to me when Peter knocks on your door. You deserve what you get, you promate, hate, and whore. You're a whore. And those tears that are falling down my face, they're for the baboon. Loved you very much, and he hopes you change your mind soon. He misses your legs, and he misses your lips. He misses your touch, and he misses your tss, especially your tss. Did I mention your tss? But he hopes you change your mind soon. He hopes you change your mind soon. I hope you change your mind soon I meant to say he hopes you change your mind soon But remember one thing As long as I live You can hurt me cause you got a baboon heart You can hit on it and tear it apart You can do just whatever you want to do You'll only be hurting that poor baboon But you still won't care. 
finish writing a song in my private language. It's taken 30 years, so you'd think that I'd be filled with joy, but no, I'm filled with great regret. For if I hadn't strangled my twin brother in the womb those many years ago when I was in the womb, well, there would be somebody who understands this song. Which makes this the saddest song ever written. Actually, we're back on the air now. Oh. <laughs> sorry. I just want to... Okay, sorry. Oh. Is... I'm so excited. We're back on the air. Uh, this All is the live we radio show. is talking about tattoos. Right, right, right. But that's... It's still... It, it, was, it was a great intro. Oh, yeah. It was a great we were, intro to the show. We're very passionate about tattoos. <laughs> I am. Love them. Absolutely love them. I can, I can tell. I can tell. Yeah, you were talking about some of them. So, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Go people, ahead. Keep, people ask yeah. me about my tattoos a lot, but that's because... Because I have them in such visible places because my arms are covered. But also, that is because I'm on stage a lot. And so I feel that having a lot of ink sort of fits with my image and my brand, mm-hmm. per se. So, yeah. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with your mic. If you're just turning your head and not picking you up or Am what I? it's doing. Say something. Do I need to eat the microphone? Uh do I not need to move? Not completely. Not completely. I'll go ahead and. I can uh, move. I can go sit next good. to you. You're good. You're good. No, oh, I wanted to sit next to oh, you. You can Damn if it. you would like. I'm not. You know. I'm. I not might gonna... switch at the break. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> she can't stay away from me, Jesse. It's, it's the beard. <laughs> You're the man the with the bell. <laughs> yeah, <I'm, laughs> it's the beard, and I ring her bell and several bell. times tonight. Bless. <sighs> My wife's not on campus tonight, so I, you know. Oh, so we I have can... a little more freedom to ring your. No, <laughs> you're gonna put it out as a podcast. I'm not it's, it's, tempting yeah, fate. It's, it's gonna be out. Yeah, it's gonna be out in the out in the in the, uh, the podcast sphere. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Don. Oh, mm. we'll get in trouble. We should probably hit some news stories, but first, we, we have not even even touched on how long you've been uh, performing as a comic and and yeah, what I... got you started, or do you not want to? You just oh, I don't care. <laughs> um. As far as the, I wanted to do this since I was four years old. Really? Wow. I am one of the luckiest, most blessed people on planet Earth. I swear to you, this is absolute truth. 
I was probably maybe four or five years old. And this will tell, you know, listeners or whoever how old I am. <laughs> uh, my family and I were watching, uh, there was a variety show called The Ed Sullivan Show. And I was watching this show with my mom, my dad, my big brother, my big sister. You got to understand, in my family, these four people had nothing in common other than their genes. Other than that, <laughs> They really were very different people. They loved each other, but very individual, very different, very unique. Mm -hmm. And I watched all four of them watch a stand-up comic. And I can't tell you who it was. And all four of them laughed hysterically. And it something just clicked in me. I was like, I want to do that. Oh, this is and amazing. that's all I've ever wanted to do. I have been absorbing comedy my whole life. I was lucky enough to have parents who were... They were super churchy and conservative, <laughs> but my dad and mom were both huge comedy fans within that framework. So at right. least I got like, you know, button down mine, uh, you know, Bob Newhart albums um, and, you know, a lot of Bill Cosby rapist, a lot of that <laughs> stuff. Um, yeah, but we didn't know that. And, so you know, okay. we don't need to go into, you know, how do you separate art from the artist? Uh, you know, right. let's let's just not. But, yeah, a lot of Cosby um, you know, stuff like Pat Paulson and my parents are very country. So I was also really confused as a kid because every Saturday night I watch these shows in succession always. Lawrence Welk, yes. Midwestern Hayride, Ooh. Hee Haw, oh. Carol Burnett. <laughs> Yay. And then after my parents went to bed, Soul Train. All a lot right. of conflict yeah. going yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of conflict. <laughs> but so anyway, it's all I ever wanted to do um, from the time I was in elementary school when, you know, they'd have show and tell. I would get up and do five minutes of Newhart. Oh, I love that. <laughs> that is uh, darling. All I ever wanted to do. Um, church plays. I would try and do Moses as a stand up. You know, <laughs> I, I, I'm not kidding. It was the only thing I ever thought I'd be good at. So once... <laughs> <laughs> Once I finally got kicked out of a very good Christian college, <laughs> I came back to Dayton and the only thing that was on my mind was doing comedy. This was 1982. Uh, Not yeah, that long ago. 83. Yeah. yeah, it's only the last century. Um, <laughs> Who's trying to help? <laughs> no, there's no help. I'm ancient. Um, but, you know, there was only this club called Wiley's and it was up in Belmont at the time. And I knew about it from the newspaper. Yes, kids, there was this thing called a newspaper. It had information <laughs> in it. Now it's used to stuff holes in doors. But anyway, um, so I knew there was this club called Wiley's. And I had seen a picture of one of the comedians, Dow Thomas. So I drove there for three successive weeks and sat in the parking lot trying to get up the gumption to walk in the place. Finally, I walk in. And this is, this is my comedy story. I walk in. I... I see Dow Thomas because I recognize this picture from the paper because there are no pictures of Wiley in the paper. So I have no idea who this right. is. So I see Dow Thomas. I walk up to Dow. I introduce myself. My name is Jesse Nunn. I've always wanted to be a comic. Um, I, I just want to introduce myself to Wiley and ask him, would he, would he let me audition? Um, could you point him out to me? Dow looks up, points to this little old man sitting at the end of the bar, nursing a beer. That's him. I take a deep breath, get my gumption up. I walk over to this guy and I spill. I've been practicing this speech forever. I mean, this is my shot, man. This is the only thing I've ever wanted to do. And I'm saying, my name's Jesse Nunn. And I really think I'm funny. And I promise I won't be wasting time. And blah, blah, blah. And this guy looks at me like I have three heads and a booger. <laughs> <laughs> I look back over at Dow. He is laughing hysterically. Oh, no. I walk back over. He's like, welcome to comedy. That's Wiley. <laughs> I walked at that point. No, he did me a great favor because at that point I wasn't nervous anymore. Yeah. All right. You just went through. I just went Absolutely. through it. Absolutely. So I just, I walked up to him. I asked him and, and basically what he said was, yeah, come back next week. I came back the next week. He said, come back next week. I came back the next week. He was like, without stage time. You just kept, yeah. It was all I wanted yeah. to do. Then he said, okay, get up. And just like that, just get up. And there might've been, I don't know, six or seven people in the room at the time, mm -hmm. um, I went up, I did my thing. I came off. I did. I remember people laughed, right? 
And I love Tease Wiley over the years about this is all the feedback I got from him for the first year I ever did comedy. So how was that? Yeah, it was good. <laughs> That's it. And but the way you knew you did well with Wiley is he'd say, you come back next week. That's how you knew you did okay. There you go. Yeah. Um, so I just started coming back week after week. And that's that's it, man. That's all this has all been a dream come true. Really. That's that's a great origin story. I that have that is because they're they're most of the people that I, I talk to in here and ask them what got them started. A friend said I was funny, so I went to no. open mic. And that's Don, you've known me a long time. We've had a lot of conversations. That is true. Rarely am I funny. I'm not <laughs> I know I'm not I am right. not naturally and, and, and person you, you are you are a fairly intense person. I mean yeah, yeah. that, that's what I mean. I'm I'm an intense, very serious person. You would not is it is one of the great hilarious moments in my life that I can tell people, you know, well, what do you do? I'm a stand up. No, really, what do you do? <laughs> they do not believe me because to meet me you do not get that impression. Yeah, you sort of have a like a George Carlin intensity about you. Yeah. 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 I can see that. If, if George was on meth, yeah, I would <laughs> I would be right about it'd be about the sweet spot. Because no, I get on stage and Donald, I'm a raving lunatic. And I, I don't really have a reason for that. It's just that I just do. Um it just It's your blah. voice. Yeah. Um, and I don't scream at people. I used to. God knows I did. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, I just it it, it 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 comes off. It's a very strong persona, and it comes over that way. But yeah, as far as you know, did I know I could get up on stage and be funny in front of a group of people? I was certain of that. I always knew I could do that. Now, as far as interacting with them in any other social situation, no. Amen. Can't yeah. do it. Can't do it. <laughs> right, All right on. I'm I'm there with a mouthful of marbles. I don't know what to say. I can't make small talk. I'm not interested. Yeah, in, I understand honestly, that. Okay, I'm I'm, you know. So how's it going? Because the truth, I don't care how it's going. <laughs> okay, it's probably going for you the same way it's going for me. Half good, half not good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's so about the way it goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ring the bell. Give me the bell. There. Yeah. Well, I didn't say there you go, though. So no, you didn't. That, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, I mean. <laughs> Close you enough. You know, so <laughs> I try to be less, a, I guess, a raving lunatic, but I still do my jokes with a very clear point of view. Um, and again, I was, I am so lucky as far as comedy is concerned. And I'll give another example of the, the, the quality of acts that mentored me and that I witnessed at Wiley's. The first guy I actually saw on stage when I first walked in to introduce myself in the club, John Regie. Hmm. And if you know anything about comedy, you know that name from Larry Sanders and all the other shows that he's done. This was this was one of Wiley's guys. I mean, he was now top flight out there. And there's a ton of names like that. Wow. Um, one of the first MC gigs that I got from Wiley, I got to open for Bill Hicks. Oh, wow. Yeah, there and you I go. spent an entire weekend... <laughs> I got myself you know yeah. being mentored by this guy and yeah it was life-changing absolutely life-changing so yeah I'd, i've had great breaks and and horrible shows and road hell and i'm so glad you said hell and not head i really wasn't sure where you were going <laughs> with that <laughs> <laughs> no, because there is a chance my wife could be listening and there is no such thing as road anything. Right. That's yeah, right. That's, I, not, I come exist, from the show, Open the Gideon Bible. I have a study and it's off to nap time yes. after a cup of milk and magnesia and three push ups. <laughs> Just, well, after the magne- milk and magnesia, you can only get three in. I think. Actually, that's a Ned Beatty line from his MASH episode. I always love that. I have to go call my wife, do three push ups, and take some milk and magnesia. I just thought it was the <laughs> dumbest thing I'd ever heard. Yeah, yeah. All right. Should we hit a news story or two before please, before please, we uh, before we dismiss? We've talked Jesse about me, and that in, has okay. deadened the the room. No, totally. oh, right. I'm it's fascinated. Good it's good not fascinating at all. It's <laughs> so unfascinating. <laughs> all right. Let's see what let's see what we got here. Uh, we can talk about Vladimir Putin, uh, <laughs> the richest man. Uh, 
in the world. Yeah, Vladimir Putin's rugged sex appeal may be making Japanese women all hot and bothered. What? It seems a 2019 cal- calendar featuring the 66-year-old Russian president in various states of shirtlessness is the top-selling calendar at Loft, a popular Japanese uh, household items chain. This is fascinating. Uh, <laughs> calendar photos show Putin dipping into a freezing lake in January, <laughs> playing ice hockey in February, and frolicking in the snow with his dogs in December according to the independent although the jap although the japan times uh, speculated many women were buying the calendar as a quote practical joke the guardians the guardian claimed putin's unashamed machismo is so attractive to japanese women that the autocrats calendar is outselling even the country's top movie stars and athletes oh uh, you know i'm looking this up (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay. the calendar or you just fact I want to see the pics me? look if I have a calendar <laughs> and I buy one every year for cow yoga that does not mean I like cows or yoga it just means that's a dumb calendar and I bought it that is yeah. okay now in defense of Japanese women I've seen naked Japanese men so I can kind of understand yeah. the attraction that they might just be feeling <laughs> some type of way because Vlad's got a little bit of meat on his bones. They like a thicker man. So, you know, whatever. I get that. But, like a little meat on your Vlad. Yeah, but yeah. Vlad, I mean, he ain't cut up or nothing. He ain't shredded. I mean, he kind of, he kind of Mr. Stay Puff looking. Yeah. He, Is he? he well, for 66 I mean, years old, now, though. I mean, truthfully, he's... okay, look. The head of a worldwide intelligence organization pretty much manipulated the heck out of our last election. And again, by all accounts, uh, between gangster money and everything else, he's going to be the richest man in the world if he ever leaves power. That's pretty sexy. Yeah, I, I I'm looking at the pictures. I don't know if I agree, but but I will say there are often times that when you meet, so you don't you don't like shirtless Putin as well. Well, I'm just not going to be Putin him on my wall. Um, what? It was a really bad Putin pie. I, I used to call him Putin. That was Putin. <laughs> Putin pie. But, oh. um, but I, I do think that sometimes there are some people in power who, when you meet them, they have a lot more sex appeal and charisma. I've heard that about Bill Clinton and even, you know, meeting like comics. Sometimes they kind of catch you off guard like wow they have just, a lot of yeah they have that draw yeah uh, there's that just you that can't. magnetism i keep telling it, you it's the beard it, it is the beard don <laughs> but i mean it's and it's one of those things and that's probably one of the things that putin has is because yeah and especially like okay in that thing with him and um president chicken boo when they had their little meeting in <laughs> no no i will not use his name he is chicken boo can we be friends forever <laughs> of course okay no if you've not watched the animaniacs Pull up the show. You can find it either on Netflix, Amazon, Hulu. Animaniacs was an animated show Steven Spielberg did, and they had a character called Chicken Boo. He was a six-foot-tall chicken who wanted nothing more than to be a human being. And all he would do was put on one piece of human garb, like a pair of glasses or a hat. And everyone around him instantly thought he was human. (laughs) I remember Animaniacs. Okay. I don't remember that don't character, Chicken but Boo. that's brilliant. Okay, that- and the thing is, the theme song ended with, you're not a man, you're a chicken, boo. That's why, okay, it is literally like we are being governed by President Chicken Boo. And half the country's already figured out he's a chicken. The other half, he hasn't taken the hair off yet. <laughs> the comb. Okay, the, <laughs> the most epic comb over since Gene Cady. <laughs> And if you're a Purdue University fan, you know what I'm talking about. That was the most extreme NCAA comb over in history, but it was lovely. But anyway, I digress. Chicken boo. Chicken boo. But yeah, um, Vlad is not that tall a guy either. Mm-hmm. He's really. He's five he's... feet ish. Yep, yep, little Putin. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I don't know if you guys heard that on that same news story. You know, they've written, there are pop songs in Russia written about him. I, be- I believe I have heard that. Okay, yeah. and they don't even call him, but they call him the boss. Seriously? In the song, they call him the boss. Ooh. That's gangster and sexy. Yeah, that well, is. I gotta say, okay. I, I, I probably would like him better than Springsteen, actually. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, hey now. Okay. Well, See, we know. just, Mike, Mike Canistero just ran off. He doesn't, he wants no part. Oh, <laughs> Better get in he just, here. He just headed down the hallway. Bring some ordinance. Come back, Mike. <laughs> yeah. 
I ain't, look, I, I, like ain't the chi- I like the chicken boo reference. I'm, I'm going to have that's, to. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, look, that's I'll have just to check that character out. Check the character out if you have any doubts. Uh, you know, all of this has been verified. <laughs> Again, that's why I call. Well, the main reason I will not use his name is because, okay, this is a man who denigrated the election process by never calling anybody by their proper name. So if you didn't like that so much, well, tough. Huh? Mm-hmm. You open the door, I'm walking through it. You are President Chicken Boo. <laughs> Absolutely. (laughs) Uh, A San Diego area college student is accusing Southwest Airlines of forcing her to leave her pet fish at Denver International Airport. Uh, Last Wednesday, University of Colorado sophomore Lenise Paulus uh, was getting ready for getting ready to fly home for the holidays with Cassie, a pink male beta fish uh, she has owned since her freshman year. I've taken him everywhere with me, she told uh, San Diego Station KGTV. Although the Transportation Security Administration website says live fish are allowed to fly on uh, planes as carry-on luggage, Southwest employees told Palace only small cats and dogs that fit in an underseat carrier are allowed. This surprised her, she said, because she's taken numerous trips on Southwest with Cassie. I just, I keep picturing, uh, I keep picturing uh, the, uh, what about Bob? She's got the little goldfish yeah. in the jar. <laughs> but, you know, I can't even sneak onto a plane with a half-full water bottle. Right. So maybe that was the reason the water yeah, or the it was liquid over, restriction? Yeah, it was over the limit. It was more than three ounces. God. You have to buy yeah, it's uh, on Southwest. You have to buy, you have to buy your fish seat. on the plane. <laughs> Did you want that breaded or baked? <laughs> Uh, today we're serving grouper, Molly, and Beta. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, you know, that's, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, on the, on, okay, in her defense, okay, if, if she can honestly prove that they've let her do this before, mm-hmm. then what's going on, really? All right. Right. Well, there, there would have because, been some kind of rule change. And honestly, you had to we're, because, we're at threat level orange now. Well, so no, okay. no betas. Beta on, Fisher Pan. Yeah. flown Southwest. <laughs> You had me the minute you said a college co-ed says Southwest Airlines forced. And I was waiting because there was no telling what they have come up with now to charge for. Oh, you're breathing way too much. We have to charge you for some extra air. So, yeah. You know, your ticket was 39 cents, but we're charging you per breath. Right. So yeah, I, I literally didn't know where that story was going. Man, you shouldn't have said that. You're going to give them ideas. That's going to be the new, the new. Uh, no, if you watch a Southwest commercial, no, that sound. You think that's a jet taking off? That's just people inhaling when they turn the air back on. <laughs> Southwest. <gasps> Next time I say, put the tray tables up. Put the tray tables up. See, okay, see, do, will you guys please do something? Because uh, what? what? I'm you're, just you're sitting here watching the magic, yeah. trying not to say my words. I'm just. A mess. I now we covered this. This uh, this will be the last one. We covered a little bit of this in the uh, last show with Patrick, or I did. We we discussed it briefly. Did you a, do a uh, story about animals without me? Not a, it's not a happy animal story. Damn it, Don! All right, <laughs> go ahead. A Missouri poacher has been uh, ordered to repeatedly watch the movie I Bambi as part of his sentence for illegally killing hundreds of deer. The Springfield News Leader reports that David Barry Jr., I wonder if he's related to the writer, uh, was ordered to watch the Walt Disney movie at least once each month during his year-long jail sentence in what con- conservation agents are calling one of the largest deer poaching cases in state history. Oh. Barry was convicted in Southwest, not Southwest Airlines, Southwest hey. M- M- Missouri's uh Southwest Missouri's Lawrence County of illegally taking wildlife. Three relatives and another man also were caught in connection with the po- to the poaching case. They've paid $51,000 in fines and court costs. Barry also was sentenced to 120 days in jail in nearby Barton County for a firearms probation violation. Hmm. So, now, we were discussing this a little bit on the last show, uh, Patrick and I were, and I don't think this is going to have the desired effect. If you are forced to watch a Walt Disney movie over and over again, when you're done and you're no longer forced to watch it, you're going to come out of there wanting to kill whatever the subject of that movie was. <laughs> so he's he's going to shoot for far more next time he goes uh, out look, poaching. Look, look, jail's supposed to have a deterrent factor. Am I right about? I mean, yeah. this is criminal mm-hmm. justice. They want to deter you from the behavior. 
okay, I can give them a list of horrible movies to make this man <laughs> sit through. There's Spike Lee, Girl 6. There's Chirac. These are movies, Spike. I love you, but you really owe me money for both of those movies. <laughs> there was a movie I saw in the 70s called I Wonder Who's Killing Her Now. There was a. I think it, I've seen that. Yeah, it, it's yeah. horrible. It's <laughs> vile. Um, there was uh, one of the most sacrilegious <laughs> movies I've ever seen, Holy Moses. That uh, a horrendous movie. Then there's the Andy Warhol epic where I think he just has a picture of the Empire State Building for like 15 hours. Hmm. Makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. So make him watch <laughs> stuff like that. Have you ever seen the movie Teeth? The who? It's called Teeth. Like I've teeth in your head. Teeth. Never, never. Oh, been. oh. Is this a scary movie? <laughs> for you, yeah. <laughs> For you gentlemen, yes, yes, it oh, is. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I got gotcha. you. No, I gotcha now. It is, no is, I'm yeah, just that, saying. No, I, I feel, no. I feel that every man should watch it. No means no, no, no. <laughs> no means hexy no. You know that your curiosity is going to get the better of no, you, it and will you're going to, you'll just look it, it up. Will never watch the trailer okay. and be like. I'll get an angry Facebook message. Look, do you know how old I was before I ever even got zippers? I used butterfly (laughs) jeans forever. Forever. Oh! There are certain risks I'm not willing to take. (laughs) Ever. So, no. mm -mm. Oh, Lord. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, All right. (laughs) We got to go ahead and take the top of the hour break. And uh, Jesse, you are welcome to stick around if you'd like to. You don't, I, I, you don't honestly, have to, but I, I would love to. Um, I, I may stick around for a little while, but then I got to bounce. It's been, it's been a hell of a day. <laughs> I know, I know the feeling. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're just going to take a break, play some, uh, play some commercials, because that's it's we got to sell some stuff. I guess I guess the station's got to sell some stuff. They they agreed to sell put stuff. these out there, so. All right, we'll be back here shortly with uh, uh, Mike Canistero is going to be joining us if he if he decided to come back and uh, and join us. I don't know. He did run down the hall a little bit ago, and he he might not have he might not have come back. I'll go He's tackle him back. in the hallway. Yeah, yeah we'll go. I'll bring. We'll I'll get him in here. Down. Mike in the hallway. All right, we'll be back here shortly. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Life Radio Show podcast. Check us out on Eventide Entertainment Podcast Network or wherever you listen to podcasts. Remember, if you want to listen live, we're on Tuesdays from 7 to 9 p.m. on WWSU 106.9 FM with a repeat broadcast on Wednesdays from noon to 2, or you can always stream the show live at WWSU1069.org. If you have suggestions or comments, feel free to email the life1069 at gmail.com. Hee-haw. Oh.